from all around you long. The other side up too sometimes, and but I think Gurdjieff has been around enough to make sure they just don't get a bit too complacent, and I don't think it'll worry them too much. Well, it's a long time coming for them, but they've uh, they're making up for lost ground, aren't they? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You fell over the year, like Werribee Centrals, for example. Yeah. Bannockburn, Thompson. Look at us. They're there. Oh, Thompson. You know, first time last year for 16 years they had been in the finals. Like that's an amazing effort to yeah. be as well. Yeah, yeah. Premiership flag. And, and uh, how, how interesting Grubby after you've unfurled the flag. And that Boom, opening round of the GDFL season for 2012. Bell Post Hill and Werribee Centrals. And it's going to be Symes and Lovell. And Lovell gets it down beautifully through the middle. That's a fantastic tap. And he gets it away to Chug. Goes long from, from uh, centre half forward. Long for goals. Close to it. Brad Martin gets back there. He just picks it up at the last line of defence. They'd all pushed up the uh, Werribee Centrals forwards. Went over their head and Bell Post Tool were able to get back in time. Good morning and welcome again to the GDFL Footy Show coming to you from beautiful Geelong on a Saturday morning. You saw us out at Buckley's last week. We're back in the studio this morning and boy are we excited. Round one of footy last week finally got underway in a fantastic round of matches it was indeed with the Cry Devils. Much too good for the Winchelsea Blues and Barry O'Toole, the legend out there at the Cry Devils, kicking a lazy five goals. Thompson and Belmont Lions, they fought round one out at St, at St Albans Footy Ground with Chris Canavan kicking six goals in a losing side for the Belmont Lions. But watch out for those Lions. They'll be thereabouts this year. Don't you worry about that. The Anarchy Roos, far too good for Geelong West out at the Church Street Oval. Daniel Berg kicked 18 goals last year but kicked nine goals in his first game this year for the Anarchy Roos. A fantastic effort there for the boy from Footrod Flats. The Bannockburn Footy Club, those mighty Tigers, too good for the Inverley Hawks. For old Dale Smith, ex-footy show legend. Yes, he's now coaching the Inverley Hawks and uh, Bannockburn gave him a nice old slacking in the first game. Ross Dillon, the co-coach of the Bannockburn Footy Club, best on the ground, a fantastic effort. Out at the Kevin O'Leary Oval, with the North Geelong Magpies, they opened their account for 2012. And don't you reckon the big fella's happy about that? Too good for East Geelong Eagles. Daniel Gibbs, the prodigal son, returning from Anarchy to North Geelong, best on the ground. And the 94.7 match of the day was out at the Ring Road Recreation Reserve with the Bell Post Hill Panthers unfurling their flag from 2011. Much too good for the Werribee Central's Ducks. And I'll tell you what, that was the 94.7 match of the day. Hello, I'm Dick Philpott, and once again... I have assembled some of the biggest names and brains in local football to eradicate, adjudicate, communicate and definitely not procrastinate. The man who needs absolutely no introduction. Have a look at him there, folks. That man there, Eric Nichols, the legend of the Geelong Footy Club. G'day, Eric. Good morning, Dick. And uh, for a fellow my age, it's uh, very early on Saturday morning, isn't <laughs> well, it? Well, it's good you can still get out of bed at your age, Eric. That's fantastic, <laughs> right? It, uh, you had a big summer, enjoyed the summer and everything like that. And a great night at Buckley's last week. Yes, excellent. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to be back. It is good to be back, and back in our studio, it looks very impressive. I thought it looked a little bit like Professor Brown's study when I first saw it on the... Have a look at that, will you? They are not legal books behind me, folks. They are sporting memorabilia. Don't you worry about that. Now, the other bloke that's sitting beside him, we got him from the duck pond. He swam down from Werribee. He is the legend. He's the ex-president of the Werribee Central's Footy Club. And he's a legend around the town. He told me that himself, Richard Grubby Cations. G'day, Grub. Hey, g'day, Dick. How you going? What a beautiful morning. What a great day for football. I'll tell you what, mate. It is a fantastic day for football. You can't beat Saturday morning in Geelong. And we are pretty excited because we have got some fantastic games on this afternoon. We've also got a very special guest coming up on the show a little bit later on, too. We're going to throw to an interview now that Eric did last week. It's with the coach of the Bell Post Hill Panthers, and of course a bloke that probably the Melbourne Footy Club wouldn't mind having him playing for him at the moment still, Brett Gurgi. Here is Eric. Oh, definitely round one, always hard and tough, and for some reasons always nice and hot too, so our players were um, sort of um, pretty puffed early in the game definitely, but I think we um, ran it out pretty well in the end, and it's probably due to how hard our guys worked over pre-season, so you know, good pat on the back for our, for our, our boys. It was a hard, tough, competitive first half and then I thought they tired a little in the second half and your composure stood you in good stead for the rest of the game. Yeah, definitely. We, we expect that from wherever every time we play them. They're big, strong boys and they're very hard at the contests and um, good at the stoppages, big bodies and stuff like that. So we, we know that's coming and and um, we've prepared ourselves for a real hard game. They've obviously got some new players out there too, some pretty good players. So um, definitely um, I thought we were very, very happy and very uh, a little bit lucky too to, to get over in the end. So it's, it's a real bonus to win round, round one. And, and early on, they've obviously recruited a very strong defensive unit they put enormous defensive pressure on you but you're able to contain your systems and and keep them standard for the game yeah it did, wasn't working great great early obviously got some um very good players down there and we, we um 
we've um, probably a bit shorter than we have been in previous seasons down there. So we had to try a few, few different things. But oh yeah, right, over, all over us early in the game and even towards the end of the game, they seem to get numbers back and make a real contest. And I just told our guys, Look, we're not going to play champagne football, if you know what I mean, go down there and chip and kick easy goals. We're going to have to really scrap for them. And that's how we got our goals, I think. And then we scrapped for them and um, yeah, got some snaps and some one-on-ones off the ground and that sort of thing to get our goals. So another, again, credit to our forward line for sticking to it. They probably struggled a bit early, but they yeah, got the rewards at the end of the day. And I guess a lot of rumours floating around the grand finally, uh, a lot of whispers that uh, you won't play this year. Uh, should I ask you the question, have yeah. you retired as a player? Yeah, well, I haven't really made anything official. Just at, at the moment, um, I've, it's no secret I've sort of struggled with the, um, injuries to me, you know, back and hips and stuff like that for well, basically since I was 17, 18. So I think they're sort of catching up with me a little bit. But um, I'll give myself every chance to um, to come back. But at the moment, so I'm not I'm not real confident. But you never know. Like I might start feeling better, you know, halfway through the year or something like that. But yeah, nothing official at the moment. Fantastic interview there with Brett Gergic and Eric Nichols. And of course, as we said, <laughs> Melbourne Footy Club wouldn't mind him back there at the moment. A few interesting comments there by Brett. So I'll go to you, Grubby. Where have you set? was jumped out of the blocks. They looked all right for a little while there, but uh, belt post two, two were good in the end. Yeah, look, they did have the breeze. They had the advantage of the wind in the first quarter and probably didn't use it to their advantage, I wouldn't have thought. They delivered the ball pretty poorly up there. And what they needed to be was five or six goals. And the way they were playing, they could have been. But unfortunately they weren't. They put immense pressure on Belpost Hill, but they just couldn't sustain it for four quarters. And if you can't do that to a side like Belpost Hill, you're not going to win the football match. Yeah, Eric, it's only round one, but is there ominous signs that the Belpost Hill Footy Club are, well, just continuing on from their great form in 2011? Probably no doubt about that, Dick, but uh, I'd perhaps uh, take a little bit of a side with Grubby there. I, I felt Werribee played very, very well early. And I think at the end of the day, it was a magnificent day for footy, but 25 to 30 degrees, first match of the year. Mm. I think it took uh, a bit of toll on the fitness of the Werribee boys as the game went on. Belpo's still very, very fit, and uh, you're right, I think they're going to be in it right up to their necks once again. Graham Lewis unfurled the flag, Grubby. A, a rumour has it you gave him a bit of stick as he was doing it. <laughs> well, I did give him a bit of stick, and I'd just like to formally apologise, Graham, and, you know, with a big smile on my face. They, I, you didn't actually get the sack, you stepped down, fair enough. <laughs> Unbelievable. No, I did, hear, I did hear about it and I was very impressed. It was good to see the duty of our hierarchy all out there in their absolute splendour will round, uh, round one of the 2012 season. And boy, are we excited about that. We're going to take a short break. We're going to pay some bills. When we come back, we've got Mitch Cleary talking about everything that's cult footy in Geelong and a very, very special guest From back after this. And welcome back. Well, we haven't got the under 18 segment this year because Smithy, we've given him leave to go and coach the Inverley Hawks. But we have got the Colts footy segment this year. And the man who knows everything that is Colts in Geelong is Mitch Cleary. Here's Mitch. Thanks, Dick. After an impressive first round of Colts action last weekend, we'll head to round two, kicking off in just over an hour's time. Our first match we preview this morning is between St. Joseph's and Drysdale. Both of these sides coming off 100 point wins, St. Joey's by an even 100 points, and Drysdale by a whopping 164 points over North Geelong. St. Joseph's and Drysdale are two sides pushing for Division 1 in the new Colts competition. Drysdale hoping to make up for the respect they've lost after playing in the BFL for a number of years. Lockie Pat uh, Riley Patton rather is a player to look forward to, kicking six goals and the leading goal kicker in the Colts after round one. Now we look ahead to Belmont Lions taking on North Shore. After a massive recruiting spree by Belmont Lion himself, Brian Coglin, the Belmont Lions got their first win last weekend and will be looking to make it two from two this morning against North Shore. The Seagulls were unable to score last week and will be hoping for an improved performance against a lesser side in Belmont Lions after they were pantsed by the Werribee Centrals last week. And the next match is between Torquay and South Bowen. Two more sides hoping to push for that elusive Division 1 opportunity this year. Both these sides coming off big wins in Round 1 to push their stakes. And Torquay has been the premier side of the BFL for a number of years. Their junior development having big rewards recently with youngster Matt Bogue, a bottom age under 18 player, kicking three goals for their senior side in their win over John Amateur last week. South Bowen welcoming new coach 
Dave DeGusto with a win over Newtown and Chewell. Grovedale head up the highway to take on Werribee Centrals. Grovedale, who struggled to field one side in the GFL last year, have managed to field two and are brimming with numbers out there at Birdo Reserve and will take on Werribee Centrals this morning, who got the big win over at North Shore last week. That's all we have time for in Colts. Back to you, Dick. Thanks very much, Mitch. And, of course, Mitch will be back again next Saturday morning talking everything that's Colts footy in Geelong footy, and it is exciting indeed. Well, I said before the last break that we had a very special guest on the show this morning, and I kid you not, folks, this man needs basically no introduction. He's done everything when it comes to commentating in football. He's been around the full stretch of AFL, VFL for a very long time, and he is Channel 7's number one commentator straight from Perth, Dennis Committee. Good morning, Dennis, and welcome to Geelong. Hi, oh, good morning, Dick, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. That's you saying number one football commentator. I, I wouldn't have put it that way, but it's very nice of you to pump me up, and it's great to be in Geelong. I'm here for political reasons, and that is to make sure that Geelong Football Club, that is, gives up their sa Saturday kind of stra uh, carryings on about playing home matches there and give it away to the local leagues. Play it a Sunday. What do you think about that, Dick? That's a great yeah. thing, Dennis, and of course, um, if you've been to Geelong very often, I know Perth's your hometown. It is my hometown. I drove after the big match last night at the MCG. I couldn't wait to get down here, and I drove down here, and I managed to stay at a caravan park in Queen's Park. <coughs> Queen's Park? That's the home of the Geelong Amateurs footy ground down there. Well, I love football. I love cricket pitches. I love anything to do with football. And if my name wasn't committee, I started on a committee, the Vaughan <laughs> Committee, and committee came from the Swan Lakes... That is unbelievable. Swan Districts, I got it wrong. Yeah. The Swan Districts Football Club, if it hadn't been the committee to elect the committee for that coaching job, I would not have been in the business I am now. Oh, I've forgotten what question I asked you there. <laughs> that is well, an you're unbelievable me answer. About, about where I came from, I yep. think, or where, what I've been doing lately. Well, I, I've been doing what I've been doing and doing the great football match of the AFL, but I am pumped up by your tremendous promotional description of Dennis Committee, the number one football <laughs> commentator, because in the old days you would have said it was Peter Landy. Oh, Peter Landy, oh, you would have heard, oh, you're a good friend of Peter Landy. Absolutely, too. I learned a lot of elocution from Peter, and I think that, uh, <laughs> but the, my best uh, learning of elocution from Lou Richards, and he was fantastic when he was uh, involved in the commentary, commentary of the AFL, which was VFL in those days, and I've got to tell you, Dick, it's great to be part of this wonderful GDFL program. What a great organisation. Who should I barry for? What? Do you think I should adopt the team while I'm down here? Well, you're probably asking the wrong bloke, Dennis, because um, I'm pretty well known to be a well one-eyed supporter of the North Geelong Magpies. What about that, the black and white stripes? Well, I, I understand that you do. You're a Collingwood supporter from way back. Now, I think that Collingwood are in a lot of trouble at the moment because, uh, you know, this rift going on between the past coach and uh, the president of the Collingwood Football Club, this is not a good sign for this time of the year. And I'm really concerned about the Collingwood situation at the moment. Now, you've met Eddie a couple of times, no doubt, uh, with your Channel 7, though he's Channel 9. Yes. You would have run into the great man a couple of times. I have. I've been with Eddie everywhere I can get him. And uh, is Eddie everywhere is no problem at all finding. I'm starting to sound like an American now. <laughs> Unbelievable. So now, tell me, when now, the, you've done a couple of games already this year. Is there any games that stand out or any of the players that have stood out so far, Dennis, at this stage? Over the games I've commentated on? Yep. Well, you probably uh, would have missed players like Liberatore. I used to like calling him. Liberatore was great to, uh, you know, get up in the forward line and before the siren had sounded... There he goes along with Paul Dimitina and bumping his opponents and get him unsteady, you know, and all that kind of thing. Doing a bit of a, uh, the great Hawthorne uh, bumper and stir, uh, break through a pack. What was his name again? Ah, oh, Dermy. But Dermy, and you could have had a lot of fun with DPU Domenico. That would have been a good Dennis Committee. Yeah, try to get your tongue around that on a, uh, on a late night. Well, especially trying to talk about it on a Saturday morning too, Dennis. It is very hard, and I'm glad to be up. I was up at 6 o'clock. I had a nice B&B uh, &B breakfast. You know, bacon and eggs and uh, yes, uh, uh, in accordance and with the compliments of the GDFL, thank you very much. Yeah, well, they would have taken you out to Buckley's, wouldn't they? They had a crack out there. Well, I didn't mention Buckley's, but I understand you'll, you'll connect with Buckley's, so I'll throw in the Buckley's too. 
Fantastic. Now, look, Dennis, now while you're down here again, uh, well, you've got to go back to Melbourne and do a bit of commentary again. Well, that's right. There's this afternoon's big game. I wish I could think on which what, what it was I'm doing, but I've so, got so many kind of commitments. I had a late night last night and I haven't had much sleep, so forgive me if I haven't got quite, uh, you know, the brain going at the moment. Who's the best football you've ever seen, Dennis? Uh, undoubtedly, at the moment, I think uh, uh, Gary Ablett, as we see now, running around the Gold Coast is... We'll win the Brownlow medal, there's no question about that. And I'm so actually overwhelmed by this player. I think his old man was fantastic in the one position of full forward. But this Gary Ablett we have today is the, the greatest player running around at the moment. Unbelievable. Dennis, look, it's great having you down in Geelong. And I've got to say that uh, I've been a great fan of yours over many, many years. And uh, it is fantastic you, had, you took the time to come down. And especially thanks very much to your good friend Paul Jennings who enabled you to make a guest appearance here today. It is much appreciated. Um, I know you started your career off with West Perth and uh, it's certainly you've come a long way in football and I reckon you've become an absolute legend. Well, Dennis? thank you very much indeed. And all I can say is think of draft pick. Think of what? Draft pick, that's the new product they got going at the moment. <laughs> Don't you watch television? <laughs> <laughs> I certainly do. Dennis Committee, and our fantastic our special guest this morning, courtesy of a very good friend of ours, Mr Paul Jennings, and I'm sure we'll see a lot more of him later in the footy season. We're going to get to compose ourselves now, take a short break, come back, get the panel back and talk about everything that's GDFL footy this afternoon. Back after this. The from all around your lawn. And welcome back. And yes, I guess we've had a real good laugh with a very special guest in the studio this morning, all the way from Melbourne, Dennis Committee, courtesy of his very good friend Paul Jennings, and we certainly appreciate it. The visit. I know we're going to get a lot more of those visits later in the season. But it's footy on this afternoon, and it's the 94.7 match of the round. It's out at the Keith Barclay Oval, and it is the North Geelong Magpies, who are one win in a row. They are going absolutely ballistic at the moment, and they take on the, well, the Dale Smith Inverley Hawks, the Battle of the Birds. Inverley having a, a pretty ordinary start to the season last week. And I'll throw to you first, Eric. Well, the North Geelong Magpies, uh, I can tell you now, mate, it was five goals to one in the East Geelong's favour last week, and all of a sudden the Magpies came back. Can they continue on their winning ways? be interesting to find out this afternoon, Dick, because... Uh I went through the scores fairly carefully. Eight goals to one in the second quarter, North Geelong mm. kicked. And uh, I guess there was a little bit of breeze out there, but that put a, a fairly different complexion on the game completely. Inverley, on the other hand, they had a third quarter fade out. So that uh, you put the two together and, and makes it for uh, an interesting game this afternoon. Is, um, I, I can tell you now, but I saw that game with uh, East Geelong and North Geelong last week. North Geelong's tackling was absolutely superb. Now, I know they have got a tackling coach out there. It's paid off, but I, I guess, as we always know in local football, the tackling can be interpreted a different way each time, and it can go against the club, can't it? I reckon even, there are people probably around, Dick, that because it's Geelong District Footy League, could, would consider the skills and not what they are in some of the other leagues. I would uh, hesitate to say the skills, the tackling, the shepherding, the smaller skills yeah. last week were magnificent. Now, if they're as good as that today, it'll be a very good game. And who do you reckon is going to win? Well, it's uh, an interesting one. I, I think North Geelong have got to start favourite there yep. at home, but uh, Grubby and I will uh, watch with a great deal of interest how our mate Dale goes, won't we? Yeah, well, we'll be giving him some special looking after old Dale <laughs> and, and, and try not to really uh, pull apart his coaching too much. But, look, a lot of people thought that was a, a huge upset with mm. North Geelong last week, but... I think if you remember back to last week when I did say last year, I just believed that North Geelong didn't quite play up to their potential with the list they had. Mm. And with the couple of blokes that they've picked up this year, some of these other fellas have obviously picked their game up a little bit and they've shown that in round one. And let's hope they can continue to show that. And of course, the big highlight of the day will be that Dale Smith will be in the coach's box, which means the whale cannot come in at halftime, which means I get all the cream cakes all to myself. Because I can tell you, folks, when the whale comes in at halftime at North Geelong, it is on for young and old at the table here, I can tell you. But we do wish Dale all the very best against the Magpies. But sorry, whale, I'm going for the North Geelong Maggies. The other big game on this afternoon, 
It's up at Grubby's Duck Pond. He hates me saying that, so I'm going to say it even more as we go along every game this year. But the Werribee Central's Ducks, well, they tried everything against the Bell Post till Panthers last week. Premiers in 2011, but they couldn't quite take the, the goods home at the end of the day. They're up against East Geelong. So, Grubby, your mob against East Geelong, two sides desperately looking for their first win. Yeah, well, they both are. But before I get on that, you might not have whale there, but I'm a bit past to do a cream cake myself, Dick, so be careful. But, uh, look, yeah, both sides looking for a win. Uh, both sides, I, th I think both sides were pretty confident going into last week. I thought mm. they, they both thought they probably could have come out winners last week. They didn't. Uh, Werribee Centrals, look, that was a real tough assignment. I thought they were pretty good for most of the day. They just weren't quite good enough to beat, I guess, the best in the business. East Geelong, a little bit worrying East Geelong because we all thought that they would win. But a good side like that doesn't stay down mm. for too long. And I've had checked the, uh, I've checked all the guides and the, the VFL game. So it looks like Port Melbourne are playing on Saturday. So Big Scrobber will be occupied on Saturday. He won't be making an appearance down at Galvin Park or the Duck Pond. The Duck Pond. It, it'll be a, a real good game of football again. It's past players down there. So sure. if anyone's watching this this morning, get down there and get an early beer in there. I'm <laughs> going to go for Werribee Central's just. What a shock. Eric, what do you reckon is going to win, mate? Oh, look, at home, you've got to go for Werribee Centrals. I, I was impressed with them, particularly in the first half last week. Very good, so it'll be fantastic. Indeed, yeah, I'll go for the Ducks too. I'm trying to get back on the bandwagon out there, so I'll go for the Ducks myself. Now, it's out at the Winter Resort. It's the Belmont Lions, and uh, they didn't do too bad last Saturday, but they take on the, uh, well, the, the Bell Post Hill Panthers, who are still impressed with their form, continuing on from 2011. Eric, uh, a big task here for the Lions. Absolutely, Dick, and, and uh, I guess the great asset they've got today is the fact that it's being played at home. They did very, very well. Three and a half quarters are uh, right in the game with Thompson last week, and uh, that's a great performance. And if Canavan can continue his form, you mentioned uh, in the intro, mm. five goals, fantastic mm. effort from him, and uh, he will take some minding. Belpost still, however, they were very, very good indeed. They uh, played out the four quarters in fairly warm conditions, and... Uh, they won that game very, very well. And I think Belpost Hill will win, but it might not be as easy as they uh, would have first thought. Can the Belmont Lions win at home at the Winter Resort? Look, improving all the time, but no, not against this mob. No way. No, not against this mob. Yeah, I, I tend to agree that uh, it might be a big task for the Belmont Lions footy club, even though Cogs have yet there with the electronic scoreboard going at absolutely full cracker. Don't worry about that. Out at the Bannockburn footy ground, Victoria Park, and I've said it a hundred times, what a wonderful, wonderful name for a footy ground that would be. The Bannockburn Tigers, they have uh, they take on the Cry Devils. And, uh, well, Grubby, I'll go with you this one to start with. Uh, it'll be an interesting game. It'll be a very, very good game. We're going out to North Geelong and Inverlee as match of the round, but this is one of the other games that could easily be match of the round with the form that these two sides shown last week. Uh, Bannockburn, they've been down a little bit, Bannockburn, for the last couple of years, and Cry are just urging their way up with all these young blokes coming through. Both sides put in magnificent performances last week. Uh, Bannockburn beat Inverleaf. Probably was the more impressive victory than the Corio one over Winchelsea. But they kicked a stack of goals in the second half. I think 19 goals in the second half with big bad Barry O'Toole getting in amongst them. And, yeah. you know, and he got a few goals as well. So, look, I just think out there at Bannockburn, it might just hold sway out at Victoria Park. And I'll go for Bannockburn just again. Derek, the Tigers or the Devils? Well, I think I might go for Bannockburn, but Grubby's uh, reading my notes here, and uh, it's, it's, it's great to see. There's only two games today, Dick, that it, uh, involve winners last week. This is one of them, Bannockburn Cry will be a good game, I think, at home, Bannockburn. No prize for guessing with the next games at bang, bang, bang. That's right, folks, it's out of the gun club, out of Winchelsea, and I'll tell you what, there's only me and my dry cleaner knew exactly how well, scared I was out there one day when they were going off every five minutes. But the Winchelsea Blues in front of that magnificent renovation out there, it's bigger than the Great Southern Stand at the MCG, folks. I'm not joking. It is sensational. And they take on the Geelong West Cheaters. And uh, I'll throw to you first, Eric. West Cheaters, they started the year off a little bit ordinary and it's very disappointing for a minute. Yeah, it'll be a long year, Dick, but uh, they've, got to, they've got to persist with it. I think Winchelsea, they gave away a 26-point half-time lead last week. I think they, uh, they might win at home. In a word, Grubby. West. Thank you. Anarchy and Thompson, we're out of time. Grubby, Anarchy, out of Footrot Flats. Always tough to beat out there out of Footrot Flats. Uh, it was a good win last week against, 
opposition that wasn't quite good. No, I don't think Anakin wins. this. Derek Innerwood. Yeah, I'll go for Anakin. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, once again, we haven't timed it very well, folks, have we? We rushed towards the end, but that's OK. We're only amateurs. Hope you enjoyed the day today. Hope you enjoyed seeing our special guest, Dennis Committee. Have a great afternoon in footy. Happy birthday to Shimmer, Carlos Gomez from the North Salon Footy Club, 50 years of age. See you all again next Saturday morning. Have a great afternoon in footy. Bye. Mate.